Recently, a video of a woman crying in front of the Baogong Temple in Kaifeng City, Henan Province, widely circulated on X. The woman has a tragic past. When she was 17, she was coerced by the CCP's public security to give a false confession. She was imprisoned for 13 years, wrongfully accused as a murderer in a poisoning case. The CCP had destroyed the prime of her life. Here is Chen Renfeng recounting her experience. I had even referred to them as uncle at the time. I pleaded, uncle, please reinvestigate. What I said just now was all lies. Then they said I was not being honest and made me kneel on the ground with my hands handcuffed behind my back. I felt like my hands were about to break. In 2002, at the age of 17, Chen worked as a nanny at a kindergarten in Yunnan province. On the afternoon of February 22nd that year, three children at the kindergarten showed symptoms of vomiting. Subsequently, the father of the owner of the kindergarten took the children to the hospital, where one of the children died. Upon investigation, the police found 0.5 milliliters of liquid containing toxic rodent side inside the kindergarten. The police determined that Chen, due to a disagreement with the kindergarten director, Zhu Mei, had poisoned the children. On the afternoon of March 25th, Chen was arrested and later sentenced to life imprisonment. She insisted on her innocence and appealed from prison. After a retrial in 2015, Chen Ranfeng was released as innocent. The wrongful conviction by the law enforcement agency shattered Chen's family, leaving them nowhere to turn. Recently, when she visited her cousin's home in Kaifeng, the site of Bangon Temple moved her to tears. Bangon Temple is dedicated to Bao Zheng, a renowned minister of the Song Dynasty, known for his integrity and justice, and for advocating on behalf of the people. He was honored as Justice Bao and worshipped as a deity. Many people, when wrong, come to pray at the Bangon Temple. The video of the crying appeal at Bangon Temple triggered widespread attention. Similar videos started to trend on Chinese social media platforms. On March 13th, another incident occurred where three women holding a sign knelt and wept bitterly, claiming injustice. Subsequently, more and more people come to the temple to proclaim their grievances. Netizens lament that lower class people in China are treated too unfairly. In today's society, ordinary people have nowhere to turn but to the gods for the grievances. Mr. Chen, a rights activist in China said, Many people want to go to the temple to cry, but this would alert the CCP. During the two sessions, the CCP forbade us to go out. Government personnel hired thugs for 200 yuan a day to guard all entrances to my home. It's just evil. After more and more crying appeals were held inside Baogong Temple, local officials became concerned, leading to the removal of the Baogong statue inside the Ancestral Hall. A day later, the Ancestral Hall issued a notice stating it was temporarily closed for construction and maintenance. The Baogong Temple in Hefei also closed. The public joked that it was the only attraction in the world that was shut down by tears. Who would have thought that even Baogong would be censored for causing social instability? With the disappearance of Justice Baogong, can it still be called Baogong Temple? An online comment read, In the old days, people at least had the right to proclaim their grievances. Now, do people not even have the right to cry? The just and unbiased Baogong of thousands of years is now seen as an object for maintaining stability. If it weren't for the CCP's cult-like nature, such despicable acts could not be imagined. Under the rule of the CCP, society is riddled with injustice. CCP officials do not have the fairness and integrity of Baogong. Instead, they oppress the people, engage in nepotism, and protect each other. Citizens frustrated with CCP officials are kneeling at the Baogong temple, calling for justice. Under the CCP regime, the people cannot obtain justice and must endure endless tyranny. Human rights activist Tang Xiaoxing stated, China no longer has Baogong. Everyone must be clear-headed. There is essentially no law in China. Whoever holds power is the law. It's just a matter of watching the performance now. Recently, dozens have been ousted from power. They were ousted because of their factions. These officials were slaves of the CCP. I was kidnapped back from Beijing on the 23rd, and by noon on the 25th, I was taken to the Shengdu police station, then detained until 8 p.m., before being sent home, kept under house arrest. After Baogong Temple closed, people found new places to cry out their grievances. 
On March 17, a group of retired company employees wept at the Wong Tai Sin Temple, having been deprived of their pensions for nearly five years with no avail. Comments on X read, The cry of the wrong that temples is spreading. After the closure of Kaifeng's Baogong Temple, cries were sounded at Guangzhou's Wong Tai Sin Temple. Can the CCP close all temples? A country that suppresses its people to cry in temples dares to continue ruling? This is extremely shameless. Under the CCP's authoritarian rule, similar incidents of rights violations are commonplace. On March 16, following the financial crisis of Hua Kang Insurance Company in Shandong Province, money withdrawal at all company branches were halted. A large number of citizens gathered outside the branches to demand justice, with the amount involved reportedly reaching hundreds of millions. The authorities have yet to offer a reasonable solution. The people kneeling in the video are home buyers from the Hong Kong City Complex in Pingdingshan City, Hunan Province. The complex, a key project started in 2009 by the Hunan Yingcheng Group, has yet to be delivered. Since 2016, Yingcheng Group has been embroidered in numerous contract disputes. Many property buyers are left without homes and unable to get refunds. Meanwhile, developers are asking for additional funds citing an increase in shared spaces. Many buyers have fallen into debt while their pleas for justice go unaddressed. Some people cannot even freely access their own money. In Fujian, a man attempting to withdraw money from his bank account was questioned by the bank about the purpose of the withdrawal. When the man refused to answer, the bank clerk threatened to call the police to investigate before allowing the withdrawal. The CCP's exploitation and control of the people extend to other areas as well. Recently, a farmer with little education and income from Yinting County, Sichuan, complained on an official website that each household in the countryside had to pay 3,000 yuan for the installation of tap water, a cost he found too expensive. The tap water project, managed by Zilian Dao Water Services, charges each household 3,000 yuan for labor and materials. This fee is below the normal urban standard in Yanting County, but out of reach for most rural farmers. Despite claims of improved water access across regions, many rural areas still lack tap water. Even where tap water is available, the cost imposes an economic burden on farmers higher than in some urban cities. Knowledgeable netizens point out that the rural areas already have water sources. Local authorities force the installation of tap water to make money. In some villages, the authorities even forcibly remove traditional stoves to force households to use natural gas. A tragic incident occurred recently in Shanxi province. A 19-year-old youth, Zhao Wei, suddenly passed away at home, drawing widespread social media attention. It was discovered that Zhao Wei had been subjected to multiple blood plasma donations in eight months before his death, with the shortest interval between donations being only 12 days. Zhao Wei's father criticized the plasma donation station for their aggressive tactics to garner donations, offering 100 yuan for each session. He said, They deceive these naive young people into frequently selling blood. He believes a plasma station should be held accountable for Zhao Wei's death. Xinzhou Tiantan Biological Single Plasma Collection runs a plasma station. In response to the accusations, it stated that Zhao Wei met the requirements for plasma donation, and the company strictly adheres to regulations. If the family has any objections, they can pursue legal channels. On the same day, the local health committee announced that the incident was under investigation. People expressed disbelief, finding it inconceivable that institution could disregard human life so carelessly. Some recalled the plasma economy campaign commenting, Human blood is as cheap as their lack of humanity. The plasma economy campaign refers to the 1990s when the CCP's authorities in Hunan encouraged the local population to sell their blood, leading to a massive outbreak of AIDS. That the Gao Yao Jie exposed a scandal and was persecuted by the CCP authorities, eventually fleeing to the United States, where she passed away last year in New York. Resistance and incidents of defending human rights in China are truly varied, with some even resorting to arson as a form of protest. In the early morning of March 20, a factory fire broke out in Cixi City in Zhejiang Province, sparking speculation among netizens. Some accused the owner of deliberately setting the fire, but the truth was astonishing. Zhejiang, known as a strong economic province and a symbol of business acumen for the CCP, is now facing a sharp decline. 
Netizens have revealed that multiple factories and shops have caught fire because the government does not allow them to go bankrupt, forcing them to resort to arson. Similar incidents have occurred in the Pearl River Delta and are now emerging in the Yangtze River Delta. In addition to Xixi City, a company in Chengbei Town, Anhui Province, also suffered a fire. Speculation and concerns grow over the true causes of building fires. This situation fuels suspicions that China's local economic challenges are deepening. This account reveals the experience of a man interrogated by the CCP's cyber police, shedding light on their routine to maintain social stability. The man claims to be the 80th citizen questioned that day. The cyber police said currently 25,000 people in Beijing are monitoring citizens' chat records on their mobile phones. Our system is monitored by big data, and once you touch on sensitive words, you are immediately flagged to our manual department. After a review, we decide what measures to take against you. The man said that these enforcers, tasked solely with monitoring private messages, represented a colossal waste of taxpayer money. If this is what they're doing in Beijing, what about the rest of the country? He finally understood where the annual trillion yuan of stability maintenance money was being spent. Eventually, due to the vast amount of content on the man's phone, it took five and a half hours to complete a backup of his phone. He was then told to go home and wait. Public sentiment criticizes the CCP's stability and security policies as primarily serving the elite, with little regard for the general welfare. This critique draws parallels to surveillance systems' inefficiency in addressing serious crimes like human trafficking. However, for people living under China's authoritarian rule, defending their rights is challenging. Recently, stories of citizens attempting to assert their rights only to be suppressed by the police is going viral. A video showed a large group of rights activists gathered at the government office in Shuzhou District, Zhejiang Province. During the appeal, a conflict with the police occurred where one person was accidentally knocked down and then dragged away by the police. The crowd immediately followed, trying to rescue the person taken by the police. This footage shows the police in Chongqing City parading petitioners through the streets in handcuffs. Commentators have pointed out that citizens should be able to seek redress for their grievances without facing suppression. The actions of the CCP's police completely defy any sense of justice. Their intention is to intimidate the populace to keep any others from doing the same. A migrant worker from Lanzhou named Jing Shuren frequently exercises his right to help others and speak freely. He often helps other workers claim unpaid wages and reports issues with municipal projects. Eventually, the authorities detain him under the charge of picking quarrels and provoking trouble. Despite the risk of police suppression, there are still groups of brave individuals protesting. Victims of forced demolitions in small rural towns in China took the streets to defend their rights. They displayed banners and played drums to express their anger and dissatisfaction. The protesters holding banners marched through the streets with messages like, firmly defend our rights, oppose forced demolitions. What we're guarding is not just houses, but our dignity. And seeking justice and fairness, demanding local resettlement. Others expressed their demands in their own ways. Multiple incidents of public resistance occurred across the country during the recently concluded two sessions. Just before the two sessions, a man delivered a public address through a loudspeaker outside a department store in Beijing, accompanied by others holding banners calling for officials to disclose their assets. He strongly condemned the CCP's police. He accused them of unjustly removing residents from their homes and accused the police of serving the interests of the powerful while neglecting the needs of the people. During the politically sensitive period of the two sessions on March 10, a black car reportedly dashed the Xinhua Gate, a primary access point to Zhongnan Hai, located near CCP leader Xi Jinping's office. Surveillance footage captured the nighttime scene where the streets were heavily guarded by armed and special police units on elevated alert. Ultimately, the individual who attempted the bold approach towards Xinhua Gate was apprehended. In Beijing, Chaoyang District, a courageous young woman made a public declaration stating, All power in the People's Republic of China belongs to the people. She emphasized that the government is of the people and for the people, citing Article 2 of the Constitution as the legal foundation of this principle. Furthermore, she referenced Article 27, which mandates that all state employees serve the populace, reinforcing the concept of a government dedicated to public service. Additionally, Article 41 guarantees citizens' right to lodge complaints, 
explicitly prohibiting any form of suppression or retaliation. Her statements underline the constitutional basis for a government accountable to its citizens and their rights to voice grievances. The young woman also called on the entire nation to take up the responsibility of upholding and implementing the constitution to ensure its dignity and authority. She pointed out that the CCP, as a ruling party, should incorporate the principles of governance into the constitution through legislation. However, if the constitution cannot be effectively implemented, then the rule of law remains an empty promise. Many netizens expressed their admiration, hoping that millions more would stand up. Some netizens commented that the Chinese people are pitiable and it's heart-wrenching to watch. Indeed, many people in China are struggling. My mother died because she poisoned herself. And my father also ate poison on the same day. Afterwards, my grandfather died. I now live with my uncle. It's hard to imagine what kind of dire circumstances would lead a couple to leave their child behind, succumbing to death. In the video, the boy wipes away tears as he speaks of missing his loved ones. In a warehouse, a senior over 70 years old faces difficulty lifting heavy rice bran bags, often falling but persistently rising to keep working. This senior works 12-hour shifts, managing more than 400 bags daily, solely to fund their granddaughter's cancer treatment. The girl's father is employed at a cement factory, where his job involves moving cement bags every day. To meet the medical expenses, the whole family dedicates themselves to working both day and night. Their dedication and sacrifice to pay for healthcare costs highlight their strong resilience and love. A woman born in 1995 recounted her challenging journey in agriculture after borrowing more than a million yuan to rent land for pumpkin cultivation in Wuhan. Despite her efforts, she faced significant financial losses upon harvest. Coming from a modest farming background and with limited education, she diligently tended to her pumpkin crop daily, yet she encountered theft from local seniors. Due to a lack of legal repercussions for their actions, they frequently stole large quantities of her produce, significantly impacting her potential earnings. While she expressed understanding for minor thefts by the elderly, the scale at which her pumpkins were being taken, often in bags and carts, left her feeling victimized. It had contributed to her financial downfall, with the remaining pumpkins barely covering a fraction of her investment. Highlighting the legal system's failure to address such thefts due to the perpetrator's age, she voiced her frustration. Her situation is further complicated by frequent pleas with the police for help. China is becoming increasingly unbearable, where malicious incidents are happening daily. On March 19th, China witnessed at least three vehicle assaults in Taizhou, Shenyang, and Beijing, with reports of numerous injuries and fatalities. Additionally, a violent attack in Guangzhou led to significant casualties, with online videos hinting at numbers higher than the official count. Public advisories encourage people to avoid confrontations as tensions rise nationally. This situation underscores comments by Donnie Yen, a member of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, who previously described China as one of the world's safest countries. Authorities appeal for restraint in response to grievances, warning against retaliation that endanger lives and hurt families. The root of all this turmoil lies in the CCP's tight control over society, frustrating many who find no outlet for their grievances. This tension suggests that China is on the brink, where no one is safe. How much more can the Chinese people handle?